it's Jazzy Jazz with iHeartRadio and Bailey's EURweb.com Spotlight. And I am cheesing like I'm on some macaroni because we about ready to get our laugh on, fam. I got Rip Michaels in the Zoom building. What's up? <laughs> I'm going to get that old fam. What, what is that? Remember back in the day, you used to go, oh, oh, oh Martin Lawrence. <laughs> right, right, exactly. That part, that part. That yes. Part. I'm so very you, you are doing some things. You're producing shows all around the country, selling them out. You're on tour. You got one coming up April 1st at Barclays Center in New York City. So talk to me yeah. about that. Uh, it's just been an amazing uh, thing. We got the April Fool's. This is my, I do it every year. This is my 10th year doing it. And that's me going out because I used to just sell out stuff by myself. And, and, and I was like, you know what? This isn't fair. So I started bringing more and more talent with me because I was doing arenas by myself. And I was like, you know what? It's time to showcase more people that aren't doing what I'm doing. So I started putting these whole April Fools together and the same thing with the Fall Back in Love comedy and music jam that I created. And that's, that's me and that one taking music and comedy and merging them together. And I'm going back after all the artists when R&B was R&B, like Trey Songz, I'm on tour with Monica, Jacquees, August Alcina. Woo, I see you. <laughs> so many different legends. And I'm bringing back people that was like in movies from that back in the day that you don't see much, like Brandon T. Jackson from Lottery Ticket and Tropic Thunder. Yeah. Merging these things. And same thing with the April Fools. If you look at what we're doing at the Barclays on the April 1st, you'll look at and you'll see that it's older comedians and it's younger comedians. Like I got oh, who's go, who talk, talk to me. Who's gonna be up? Who's gonna be making us laugh? I got people that I was fans. I was fans of when I first started doing comedy. I started doing comedy when I was twelve. So I go back, and it's just an honor to this day to work with like Melanie Camacho, Adele Gibbons is on the show, uh, uh, Donnell Rollins is on the show, and it's just these legends that have been around for so long. Rob, that's what's Robin. up. That's what's and up. With the new people like myself and the Tiffany Haddishes and. And uh, the the oh, consist- Tiffany's gonna be there. Tiffany Haddish will be in the building. Yes. All right, y'all. Now you know I love me some Tiffany. So and I love Donnell. So I can't wait. I can't wait. So it's let's more talk than about- that too. It's like actually like thirteen comedians, and then I add artists to it as well. I got the baby, uh, fabulous, and uh, Bobby Schmurter. Okay, that is so. What's up? I am gonna be in that <laughs> building for real. <laughs> yeah. Right. Now you right. now the ticket prices are not crazy. No, like what's the ticket prices? My tickets, believe it or not, start at thirty dollars. That's what I'm saying. Now that was a conscious decision you made to keep it affordable for the people. So talk to me about that. Well, you know Beyonce out here selling tickets for Blood Diamonds and all Blood that. Diamonds. <laughs> and, and Drake. Yeah, like got- you got to give up your whole se- your whole life year salary to go see Drake, yeah. right? I always want to create something that's like affordable for everybody to go. So when I do the thirty dollars tickets, it's on purpose. It's it's meaningful because I I think a lot of people don't get to experience what we do because it's so expensive nowadays to go to concerts. And I want to make sure that I keep a nice amount, a large amount of thirty dollars tickets, and I make my shows affordable. I consider myself the Ross for less or the, <laughs> the Rainbow or Denise or the City Trends of tours because that's what I do. I make it affordable, man. And I I think that people have such a good time when they can afford because it is expensive to come out and it's these these times people need to laugh with all the stuff that's going on i mean it is rough out here in these streets it is hard so what you're giving back to the people you know mad respect and and i love you for that you got a heart i love it now how do you make the bag though with those Uh, prices (laughs) i make the bag because it's really not about making a bag so when i started not making it about money and making it about entertainment, it comes. So it's like something that normally would probably be in a 5,000 seater, which selling out 15,000 15, seats, 19,000 seats. Like I, I wear the Wild Now brand because I actually started that tour as well. The Wild Now tour is something I took on my back because Nick was like, look, man, I wish I could sell out arenas. And I was like, I'll do that for you, man. You put me on a show and I started in front of 1,500 seats. And next thing you know, we were number two on Polestar, selling out across the country. Okay, now. <laughs> okay, now. All right. So what makes you think you're funny? What makes me think I'm funny? I would say my mama, because she was like, go sit your silly ass down. <laughs> And my teacher said something that was instrumental to me. She's like, if you're going to act like a fool, at least get paid for it. And I was like, <laughs> now, have, you seen, wait, have you seen that teacher since you kind of blown up? I have not seen her since I blew up, but that was, that was it right there. When I found out that was actually a thing, I was like, oh, 
I'm in the wrong thing. I don't need to know about angles and geometry and how. <laughs> <laughs> So you knew you were your your mama and your teacher. See, I love it. That's why we got to give our kids positive affirmations for their strengths, right? Yes, and I always want to give a big shout out. Anytime I do comedy, I want to shout out um, my auntie Jackie. My auntie Jackie really got me into this um, because, uh, first of all, auntie Jackie was my dad's girlfriend, but I didn't know that was my dad's girlfriend. My dad used to be called his girlfriend auntie. I had no idea until my mom told me, "That's not your auntie. That's your daddy girlfriend." And then, but don't. I had an Uncle Charles too, so. Uh, <laughs> you had so, an extended family, huh? It was a loving, a loving family. <laughs> yeah, she actually got me into comedy and take me around the rooms and stuff. So it's just been uh, a phenomenal trip. So. That's wonderful, though. You know, congratulations on all that you've done, and you have another accomplishment. I mean, you married. You've been married for a little minute, right? Yes, I've been. I just recently married. I've uh, been married about coming almost two years now. So, and I married an Indian woman. So that's just I know the, the red dot Indian, right? Yes. Yeah, when you propose with a sharpie, you'd be like, "Boop." You, <laughs> <laughs> you get my phone. So, so, so how yeah. did that all happen, and how are you all navigating the cultural differences? I'm um, actually we're doing a, a lot of different things. Like, cause she Indian, Indian. She like when her parents met me, they were like, "We are not liking him black skin." Like they would just. Like, oh my god. <laughs> But so many Indians are dark, though. Like, yo, you go to India, you be like, "Is that Pookie over there?" You know? Yes, they look just like us, but uh, they don't. They don't. <laughs> they don't claim so, it. <laughs> so uh, it's just been a, a great. But I love the upfrontness and the boldness of it. So I love when people tell me to their face they don't like black people. I think that's dope. But it's just <laughs> like, don't be fake racist to me. Don't don't deny me. Don't ask smile on my face and be like, "I wish I could have done something for you." I don't like. It. Just be like, look. <laughs> That's your section over there, so I could be like, I got. Well, it. how did you all, how did you all even come together? That must have been an interesting story. Well, my wife actually, um, she worked for a bank, and she was like the head of the bank. She managed over eighteen thousand employees. So my wife is a very serious. Oh, she's a boss. Okay, now. <laughs> yes, and has this silly side, and then like she has so much stuff she does with the community, and so much stuff she does for managing so many employees. But deep down, she was this silly girl when she took her hair out a bun, and she just was like. I was like, oh, I would have never expect. Like, you mean what? You never expected to be silly, but she is silly and just as funny as uh, as funny as I am. And uh, we've been doing. That's what brought us together. I think comedy brought us together because I realized how silly she was. We went to the gym one day because she does. She's all about energy and healing and everything. And so we went to the gym one day, and I was like trying to work out with her, and out of nowhere, she's so serious, and out of nowhere, I said something, and she just started going in. I was like, oh, you like to fart out loud? I got it. So this has been a whole. <laughs> whole thing ever since and we even started launching companies together like we have this thing we just did called babe which is black and brown entertainment so we're merging the two cultures together and we did our first event um and actually my wife hosted it so actually she is getting that funny side out there she did it with russell peters and we had russell peters and nick cannon and we we merged it and we did it in queens which is the heart of every indian culture queens i would say queen they're there they own every store that's their borough that's oh their for borough. real for real though for real though well i i would love to see some black folks in the bollywood movies oh yes you know because they funny. be getting they be dead they be getting down with those dances okay so are yes. you preparing are you gonna be yes, I, I actually have mad pictures of me in quarters and everything like that my wife bring me over to the cultures and watch <laughs> with ia and everything so yeah i'm definitely getting submerged into the culture as well uh <laughs> to learn how to eat with my feet and hands <laughs> <laughs> okay so now how do you keep it spicy like how do you keep it spicy in the bedroom how do i keep it spicy in the because, bedroom? because you know that's an important part of any relationship is is keeping that spice and that excitement going you know after you've been together for a while that is a good question hey veronica <laughs> veronica come here for a second <laughs> she got the answer to that one. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna let her answer that question as I do this interview. <laughs> my wife right here. She wanna ask you a question. Get over here. Come on. <laughs> this is my wife right over here. <laughs> She'll be super mad, but <laughs> all, all about truth. You are dumb. You are dumb right, right now. Here. You actually got bring a question her that to she wants to ask you directly, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Hi Veronica. What's up? Oh, you're so pretty. <laughs> We, he's been talking about the relationship and, you know, what a boss you are and how silly you are. So I asked him, I said, well, how do you keep it spicy in the bedroom after, you know, you've been married for a little bit? And so he, that's what he called you over to answer. Like, just uh, read that on you. <laughs> that's so true. Um, 
I guess we play, I we play a lot of role play. Oh, that's a lot fun. Um, and as our dog makes a bunch of noise in the background, <laughs> and goes to be a doggy daddy. <laughs> so do you, do you dress up in the furry costumes? No, because we're really silly people. <laughs> So I dress up like, I love unicorns. So I'll dress up in a unicorn outfit. He'll buy me the onesies and a lot of role playing and just being ourselves and being super silly. So ladies. And, the and, and I'm, um, I'm, I'm a kid at heart. So I'm not as experienced. So I ask for a lot of teachings. So he teaches me a lot of new things. That's really fun though. He's a lot more experienced than I am. That is actually really fun. And so ladies, unicorn sex, that's the move. That <laughs> is the move. <laughs> and well, I've been in tune to like energy and sensuality. So um, just us learning, taking the time to learn and being being honest about like, our past, our traumas, the things we need to work through, that's actually helped our, our sexual life a lot. Yeah, no, that's beautiful. Well, it is so nice to Zoom meet you, Veronica. Thank you for joining Thanks. us. Congratulations oh, on your marriage and, you. and your shared silliness. Uh, <laughs> she you. asked how we met. I was like, she was this real serious person that kept her hair in a bun all the time. She would never. <laughs> No, I was really, I was a senior VP for one of the second largest banks. She, he said, he was telling us. Yeah, he was singing your praises, girl. He really was. Uh, so, Rip, I got two last questions for you. Oh, you Thank you, Veronica. Thank Bye. you. <laughs> so, let's talk real quick about Wild and Out. And there must have been a lot of temptation on there with those hot Wild and Out girls. Do you think that's why Nick has so many kids? I think Nick has so many kids, it's just Nick. I think that's just what he did. He's like <laughs> of the world. Um, and I actually, like, I've always created jobs. So me, big shout out to Danielle. This is Woman Empowerment Month. Big shout out to Danielle Crawley. She is the Nick's cousin, and she's casted every single uh, person uh, on um, Wild and Out as far as when it comes to women. She picks all the Wild and Out girls. There's and, a lot of baddies on Wild and Out, for real. <laughs> and when and I created the tour, me and Danielle went out to every city to make sure every single time we did Wild and Out Live, we picked girls from the city. Oh, and they that's dope. And like, I make sure I have a casting call in every single city. She actually flies in, she picks the girls and they get to go on stage on the tour. And a lot of them have gone on to be on the show, be Fashion Nova models, do actual modeling work. So big shout out to her, because she actually is a black owned female who has one of the largest female owned casting companies in LA. That is what's up. Well, two last questions. Spill a little bit of tea on Nick, because you work with him closely. What's something about Nick that we might not know? Nick hates surprises that you will never know that. I know, especially with how many kids he got unexpectedly, he hates surprises. <laughs> <laughs> so so I, do you all take advantage of that? And surprise, is there like, tell us a story about when you surprise him on the show. Uh, okay, so uh, a surprise that I did with Nick was like, I'm always like, if you know, I'm always Mr. Did I go too far? So on the show, there was an older lady when Nick, like, obsessed with older women. And I actually had this woman and she was a little older and she actually came on the show and she could take out her teeth. And Nick was Ooh. not prepared for and family, uh, family reunion, and I was like, Nick, you like them older, so I got you a special treat. She's a freak in the bed and she can't even take out her teeth. <laughs> I took out her teeth, she gave them to me and I ran across the stage and when Nick wasn't looking, I made Nick kiss her teeth. And he, <laughs> <laughs> and he pulled me in the room, he's like, Rip, don't ever do that to me again. Don't ever <laughs> let me in if you're gonna do anything like that. So that would be- So he surprise. hates surprises. He hates surprises, hates <laughs> any, any other any, any other little secrets that you can share? Uh, he probably got more kids on the way. I think he's opening up uh, uh, Nick Cannon daycare. I think that's <laughs> now, is that real talk? Is that for no, real? I don't know. Can I quote you on that? <laughs> I'm just joking. I don't know if he's doing that, but he should invest in owning all the Chuck E. Cheeses. I know he got toys. <laughs> to bring it back. That's right. Well, what's next for you? And remember Barclays Center, April 1st in New York, the t and all these tours every year continuing throughout the country. So you don't want to miss it, fam. 
because yes. it is funny. Like, and the people you have are like, that is fire. That is fire. Well, so. Well, thank you. Uh, you can look for another season of Urban Eats and Treats, um, which is streaming on Hulu, Peacock, everywhere, in over 100 million homes. It's where oh, um, yes. giving back. And I go to different um, cities and I take my celebrity friends and I show them that we have good stuff to eat in urban neighborhoods across the country. And we showcase all different type of nationalities and different type of cuisine. And I take all my friends with me like Shaq and Tamar and Brandon T and you name it. And next season is going to be, you want to see Cardi and so many different more people than Michael B. You're going to see so many people on the next season. So it's just been a great journey. So you can expect that from me and more fallback and love dates. You're going to see me, Monica, Trace Austin, so many others. I'm bringing them all back with some of your favorite Yes. I see all of that. Yes. So, I, I, I can't happen. wait to check out Urban Eats and Treats. How do you, I just, I don't know how you stay slim doing a show like that, though. I would I'm getting it back. Everything. <laughs> Active sex with my wife. That's how I stay thin. Active sex. <laughs> Indian, we do hot yoga sex. That's what it is. You know? <laughs> hot yoga sex. With the unicorn sex, right? Yeah, with the unicorn. That's what it is. <laughs> Rip, what a pleasure. Thank you for sharing your beautiful wife with us as well. And I will see you April 1st, no doubt. Thank you so much. And thank you for shouting out, Melanie. I really think that, I mean, she really, really appreciates that. Um, oh, no, definitely. I'm looking forward to the combo with her. I, I'm serious. I'm going to do, a, I want to do a special around here on Black women in comedy, you know? I think that's great because she has for, been over for women. Yeah. So many years. She's, you know, she's one of the original queens of comedy. And I think that, you know, when they started that, they overlooked her. And she has been a beast. I mean, great, written for yeah. so many. I'm going to check her out on Netflix. I can't wait. But what? Rich, thank you for joining me on iHeartRadio and EUR Web Spotlight. All right. Thank you. Yeah, but no, definitely, I will um, I will definitely do something with Melanie. It's just that, it, it, like, I like to do a little bit of research and prep, you know, um, a little bit like and I it just came on came at the very last minute so well so they told me to, to get another person that you wanted another person with me so yeah I was going to... we were talking I... about the head <laughs> it was because my my editor my producers they wanted one of the headliners you know so which that... is me funny. and that's uh, you we got you so we're you happy know, I am one of the headliners by the way I'm not just the host I am a comedian <laughs> Yes, you are. No, we are happy. We are happy. And I am honored that you joined me today. So thank yes. you so, thank you so Melanie, much. it melted my heart when you said that. Like when I got on and y'all were just talking about doing this, but I was like, that was, that was so God sent. Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad. No, I really want to do it. She seems like a dope sister. I can't wait. Well, thank you so much. You have All a great right. day. I'll see you April 1st. I'll yeah. come back and say what's up. <laughs> All right. Got it. Turn up. Okay, my love. Bye. Now, fam, don't forget to subscribe so I can keep bringing you these conversations. Let's go, let's go.